In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So at school, when we get together, we talk about the seasons of the church year. We're talking about how it's now the season of epiphany. Uh, and I use the image of a light bulb. You know, in cartoons, when the light bulb goes off and there's that aha moment, uh, that epiphany is the season uh, that people encounter Jesus for the first time. And they realize uh, that this is something special, something that changed the world forever. Uh, and so we've been talking about the season of epiphany. Uh, one of the other things that we talk about uh, during the school uh, year is uh, particular virtues. Each month uh, has particular virtues, including this month. Uh, does anybody remember what the virtues for this month are? All right. And are willing to, all right. What do we have? Self-confidence. Self-confidence and friendship. And friendship. It was self-confidence and friendship. Uh, and the more we've talked about them, the more I've come to think they're really, really closely related to each other. Uh, that you need to have self-confidence in order to be the best friend that you can be. And uh, one of the stories that we tell during Epiphany is the story of Jesus being baptized. And I talked to our children about the fact that uh, back then, in that tradition, uh, baptism was like taking a bath. Uh, except we took a bath of all the things that we'd done wrong, all of our mistakes and the things we wished we'd done but we didn't do. Um, and so it was a little different than our baptism today. Um, it was getting clean. Uh, and John the Baptist tells us that Jesus is coming and you better get clean. Uh, so people would take a bath um, and be baptized to get clean. So Jesus comes to get baptized. But why would Jesus need to get clean? And we decided, I helped, uh, we decided that the reason that Jesus was baptized is that Jesus takes on all of us uh, and all the things that it means to be uh, a person. Uh, that when he was a baby, uh, he cried, he did all the things that we did as a baby, uh, some we don't even want to talk about. Um, you know, but he was a baby just like us, and he was a boy uh, just like we were a child, and he was a person just like us. And that uh, in baptism, Jesus is taking on all the things that we wish we hadn't done, all the things about being a person. Uh, and when Jesus comes out of the water, an amazing thing happens. God comes down. Uh, and what animal does God come down as? Does anybody remember? A dove. A dove. A dove. And he says, you are the joy of my life. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And in that moment, every one of us should have that ring in our ears. Every one of us should hear very loudly, you are my beloved. You are my child. You are my daughter. You are my son. You are the joy of my life. With you, I am well pleased. And it goes back all the way to the beginning. Remember, when God made the whole world, uh, God looked upon us and all of the things, the beagles and all of the other things, and said, this is good. This is good. And we need to never, ever forget that. Because when we remember that we have special gifts, uh, we remember that God made us specially just the way that God wanted us to be, it helps us to celebrate other people's gifts. Because sometimes we have the habit of doing this. Uh, one of our friends will say to us, you know who's really cool? So-and-so. And we're like, no, they're not that cool. I mean, I'm cooler than they are. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what makes them so cool? Because we feel like if they get to be cool, then it makes us less cool somehow. Or if they get to be a really good athlete, that makes us less of an athlete. Instead of saying, you know what? That person does that beautifully. And that is a gift that God gave them. And I've got other gifts that might look different. And that they can be special and I can be special. Because all of us came out of the water and God said, that is my beloved child. That is the joy of my life. I am so pleased. And so we have this message from Paul, who's teaching us about that. Uh, and, and Paul seemed to have the same problem that we do, that we always compare ourselves to other people, and we always think, uh, either they're better than me, or I'm better than them, or I'm so different than them uh, that, that we can't possibly get along. Uh, and what, what does Paul use to tell his story? What image? What image did we hear in that story? What image? It, he said, we are like what? We are like babies of Jesus. We are a body. We are a body. Uh, and when I do this, do you know that I have to use a whole lot more than just my fingers to do this? 
Uh, you know, my mind's got to send something down my spinal cord, it's got to send it uh, all the way through all the other parts of my arm for me to do this. That I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't have my brain and my spinal cord and my elbow and my shoulder. Uh, and do you think my fingers say, I don't need you, elbow. I don't need you. I am so much better than you. Uh, because they realize they need each other. And they realize that each piece has an important job to play, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And so what I want you to know is that your friends are just like you. Your friends are just like you. No matter how different they are, hopefully they are different in lots of different ways. But your friends are just like you in that when they come out of the water, when they were born, God looked at them and said, that is the joy of my life, my beloved. That is my son, that is my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. And then we start to celebrate their differences. And we say, you know what, I am glad uh, that you aren't eyes, because then I couldn't hear if I didn't have ears, eyes, nose, and all of the other things that make me a person, right? So when we get together, and one of the things that we work on and when we get together, especially on this particular Sunday, is that we are a church and we are a school, but we work together. And we are a class of lots of different students, but we work together as a body. Uh, and the more that we bring new and new people in, uh, the more that we have different ideas and different ways of being. And that's a gift. And that's a gift. And so then we had the other story we told today, the story that I told, uh, where Jesus reads about how important the poor uh, and the sick and those who are sad or those who need special help or those who can't take care of themselves as well, how important they are to God. Because what do you think God says to them? Do you think God says to them, you're not quite as special? No. Will God ever say that? God says to them, no matter where they live, no matter whether they have a roof over their head, no matter whether they are cold or hungry or sick, God says, you are my child, my beloved, the joy of my life. Uh, I love you and I'm well pleased with you. So what do you think God would want us to do to somebody who is sick or sad or hurting? What do you think God would want us to do to them? Do you think God would want us to help them believe that truth? Maybe... Help them realize how special they are. And maybe that starts with giving them uh, food to eat and fill in their bellies or giving them a good roof over their, their head or clothes or taking care of them the same way God, uh, God wants to take care of all of us. And that's what we do together is we take care of one another. Can you give me an amen? Amen. amen.